Don't let them grind you down. One team, one purpose. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Joan Gaither, President of Preservation in Fort Sam Houston. Woo! Okay, everybody, here we go again. Fifteen months ago, I was on a trip, got a phone call from a member of my board telling me what happened to the house. Most of it was gone, to include a very, very badly damaged roof, garage in terrible shape. I drove up, took a deep breath, and said, we did it once. We're going to do it again. The next week, I had the incredible good luck to have two wonderful things happen. Number one, and now I'm going to embarrass all these men and women in uh, green uniforms, got a phone call from the AMED Center in the School and Museum. And this is a quote. You have been part of our team for over 20 years. Every time we ask you to use the house for an event, we're never turned down. You're always generous with everything that you share in preservation regarding Fort Sam Houston. Now it's our turn. Now, do you know we were homeless? Where would we have gone when they were going to work on this house? Where would we have had all our events? Well, everybody, you lucky little ducks, you know where we went. We went to the museum. And that's where we've been for the past 15 months. And have, we have formed a partnership. I'm going to embarrass the heck out of you, General. With uh, this AMED Center and School team, you have no idea how much we appreciate your thoughtfulness, your caring. And what I got out of it was even better. I got two new board members that are now Army nurses. <laughs> and they have started a whole new era. <laughs> Uh, it has been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience. Now, second good thing, as our insurance carrier was standing there with his hands on his hips, he said something very, very prophetic. He said, this house is incredible. It is not, and understand the difference, this house is not demolished. It's injured. It was hit by a natural disaster. This is a phenomenal house. And I can only think of one person that I'd be comfortable doing all the work. And boy, when we talk about work, we're talking, this, I'm going to embarrass this guy. Uh, guy Chipman III. Here he sits right here. We know him as Woody now. Bless his little heart. He started the process of putting this giant, giant damaged house back together. And what he and his teams have done, look at the list in the dining room of all the people that have jumped in. Once again, we did the same thing that happened 20 years ago. We had a nerve. We don't know how we do it, but we hit a nerve. Everybody wants to jump in and help. Now, the difference in having this wonderful, wonderful general contractor that is a historic preservationist, fifth generation San Antonio or seventh? You've been hanging around here a long time. Sixth generation. Yeah. He's been around for a long time. His, his thinking process on... Number one, respecting the military history. This was very important to him. Number two, how the military history and this installation, and particularly this house, feeds into San Antonio. The reason this house can never go anywhere are I just love the different things. Number one, some of the wood you find here, do you remember the newspaper article about the solo serve going downtown, being demolished? The wood's here. Woody found it, brought it. Uh, anybody been noticing another job that he has that I just love? Uh, the German-American school, the old historic school across from Hemisphere. The wood's here. So not only does this wonderful old house belong to the military and its historic people, it belongs to the city of San Antonio. It's your house. It's your history. It's everything that belongs to all of us together. And uh, I can't tell you how... When, you know, when everything gets wiped out and you go, you take a deep breath and go, okay, now how do I do this? I can go positive or I can go negative. We have formed a group of board members that are the most compatible, free thinking, sometimes scary how much we think out of the box group. And uh, the group that we have started now with the children, one thing when you get two army nurses together, what do they do? And they like crafts, they like kids too. Anybody heard about the 75 kids that came into the house that did uh, gingerbread houses last year? You can't hurt the house. It was under tarps. <laughs> this year we got 100 of them. That scares me a little bit. Last week we had uh, coin husk dials out there. What they're doing is they're learning history courtesy of the Living History Association. We're now partnering with all the different historical groups in all of city. And they're calling us the witty, the living history 
Southwest School of Arts and Crafts. They said, we've heard about you. We know what you're doing with the children. Uh, how can we join in? In two weeks, we're going to teach the children how to write with quill pens, making their own. And that's scary, I know. Uh, I mean, how many people don't have forgotten that, you know, this Declaration of Independence wasn't signed with a Sharpie. They're going to learn it and learn history at the same time, all here out on our porches. This is living history. This is what we do. This is what we preserve. So what I want you to do is walk through this house, uh, the parts that are not done. That's our job to raise the money. The parts that are beautifully done, thank this guy right here, Woody Chipman, who is our no. I, I embarrass him all the time when I'm, in, when I'm not yelling at his uh, people at work. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you. All right. Now it's time to assemble the official party for the ribbon cutting. Coming forward are members of the party, General Line, Mrs. Gaither, and Guy Chipman.